Hey, what's up everybody? Make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video to figure out how you can win this nine-man Japanese infantry squad from Eureka Miniatures. All right. Let's talk about a tournament. So a couple Saturdays ago, I participated in my first bolt action tournament. Now I've uh, hosted and ran a couple different bolt action events and tournaments, but I've never actually participated in one. So this one was called Curse Gate Gajograd. Now Gajograd is the fictional city that our bolt action group tends to fight over when we do bolt action events. The name of our local store is Gajo Games. And if you are anywhere near Salt Lake City, Utah, you got to check them out best store hands down huge selection amazing staff tons of great terrain and models seriously go check them out uh but this event was called curse kagajo grad uh one of our group members doug was running it we actually were going to run it last summer we figured there's no way covid was gonna extend beyond spring and of course it lasted for more than you know we're still dealing with it now um but regulations let up enough to where we could have a bolt action tournament for the first time in over a year. So Kurske Gajograd, uh, this was an all uh, armor platoons bolt action event, three games, 1,250 points. There was a stipulation that all of the vehicles had to be in service in 1943 or earlier. So no late war tanks, nothing that came out in 1944 or beyond. This was all early to mid war tanks and vehicles uh, is sort of themed around the battle of kursk uh, but is very loosely based there but yeah uh, so doug had wrote into his tournament pack that there would be secondary objectives uh, so these were uh, five objectives that each player was given at the start of the event written out on uh, little pieces of paper uh, so before each game you could choose one objective you would place it face down on the table and then you try to complete that objective. Of course, you don't want your opponent to know what it is. And if you accomplish it, you gain more points for yourself and for your team. Uh, this was an Axis and Allies event. So those points not only matter for yourself, but for your fellow teammates. Uh, another cool thing about this event is that Doug implemented uh, strategic reinforcements. So each team chose a leader and that leader would kind of decide where these strategic reinforcements would go. I think there was four or five different tanks for both the Axis and the Allies that he could insert into any game that was going on. Now, the hitch here was if you gave out those strategic reinforcements, each one would give the other team a couple points. So you may need them to win the game, but you're also giving away free victory points to the other team. So it was a, it was a balancing act. It was a really cool kind of dynamic of do you want to win the mission or how badly do you want to win the mission and you don't want to give your opponents free victory points so so i decided to take my japanese armored platoon now funny story the reason i have a japanese army at all is because of this event though it was supposed to happen last year uh spring of 2020 is when i started building this list um and I never really got to use it until 2021. Um, so here's what I took. Uh, this is two platoons. Uh, the first platoon was four Hago tanks. Uh, three of them were 3D printed, and one of them was a nicer Warlord resin one. So the Warlord one became the command tank. Uh, I do have some tank riders on there with a big rising sun flag. That was purely for show. Didn't mean anything. Uh, it just looked really cool. So I had to include it. Uh, and then I had in that first platoon a flamethrower team. I had three suicide AT guys. Uh, all my suicide guys were veteran. Uh, I took a medium anti-tank gun and then a truck to tow the anti-tank gun and another truck that carried the flamethrower and usually one of the suicide AT guys. So that was platoon one. Platoon two is the three ch chihas you see in the back. Uh, one has a medium anti-tank gun. That's the Shinhoto Chiha version. 
Uh, the other two had the light howitzers, and the one in the center there with the red flag is the command tank. Uh, so yeah, 1250 points. This was 14 order dice. Uh, the original list that I had wrote and I played a couple practice games with was 17 order dice, but 17 order dice was a little bit obnoxious, and I had a couple of different units in that army that were practically worthless. And after practicing with it a couple times, it was a little unwieldy. It really slowed the game down. And the opponents that I practiced against had six or seven dice. So I figured I could drop down to 14 dice from 17, still maintain that dice superiority, uh, but not be quite as obnoxious, and make sure that everything in my list was actually capable of doing something. So this is the list. Um, yeah, my thinking behind it really was that like the Chihas and the Hagos are are pretty sucky tanks. I would say the Shinhodo Chiha would be my uh, only not sucky tank. Um, but I figured uh, weight of order dice would allow me to capture objectives or have too many targets for smaller order dice lists to, to handle. And then I had enough Suicide AT uh, to mess with anyone who got too close and then I had a flamethrower in there that could at least uh, force some tanks to take morale checks and a medium anti-tank gun for another sort of strong anti-tank option so did my list building strategy really pan out the way I thought it would let's find out and let's jump into game one So my opponent for game one was Ray, and Ray brought his Soviet armored platoon. Uh, so this was six order dice, pretty much exactly the type of army I was expecting to come up against in this event. Uh, Ray was running three T-34 76s. Uh, now he's got them modeled here as 85s with the heavy anti-tank gun, but he was running them as the 76 with the medium anti-tank gun because of that 1943 cap. Uh, he ran a KV-1. And then he had a truck that was full of a unit of Soviet assault engineers. So a pretty solid little list, beautifully painted. I love the whitewash that he did. So the scenario for game one was the tank battle scenario out of the Tank Wars book. Uh, so this was pretty much just kill each other and get their order dice. Uh, the twist to this scenario is that there's smoke on the table. So at the start of each turn, you roll a dice on a roll of a one. Uh, you only have visibility up to 12 inches on a two or a three you only have visibility up to 24 inches and then on a four up you have full visibility but uh, every time you take a shot it's going to get a minus one penalty uh, for the smoke making it more difficult to acquire targets so we rolled for table sides i ended up winning it and i chose uh, the the village side of the table uh, and then we both rolled ones for our preparatory bombardments, so neither of us got prep bombardments. Uh, our deployment was Ray deployed half his army first, then I deployed half of my army. These units could all be hidden, and then we each deployed our other half of the army. So everything started on the table, and then we started pulling dice. So there's a couple fun highlights from this game. Uh, first of all, I think I failed maybe four or five of my advanced order checks for my Hagos because they have the one-man turret rule. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, my Suicide AT guys, all of them hit their targets, but they all kind of hit them in different ways. So I ran a truck up my left flank with my Suicide AT guy and my Flamethrower team in it towards his KV-1, but they wouldn't be able to jump out and charge his KV-1 right off the bat so they would have had to wait another turn well survive another turn to get to it his kv1 fired on the truck uh vaporized the truck vaporized the flamethrower team inside but my suicide at guy survived and dismounted d6 inches i think about five inches so he was actually forced to dismount from the truck towards the kv1 which set him up perfectly for the next turn to run in and blow the kv1 up if that hadn't happened, I don't think I really had a good way to take care of that KV-1, so that was really nice. Uh, my other suicide AT guy got close to a T-34, then foobarred and ran in the opposite direction, but managed to come back two turns later and get that T-34. Uh, I found out very quickly that 
my hot guns were pretty much useless against the T-34s, against medium tanks in general. Uh, luckily, they put enough pins on the assault engineers to render them useless. I did lose one Hago to them. Uh, but when firing at armored targets, there's just such a small chance of them doing anything with their low-velocity light anti-tank guns. So it really became a, a shootout between the T-34s and my Shinhoto Chiha and my medium AT gun. Um, but eventually, I just overwhelmed raise smaller force with all of my order dice uh, he just didn't have enough units to take out all of mine um, so in the last dice of the last turn one of my hagos actually managed a side shot on a t-34 and killed it which meant ray only had one unit left which was his, which was his assault engineers but they were down to one man uh, and i think i had three hagos remaining and a couple chihas um since this scenario is decided on the amount of points uh, that you destroy, I was able to call this game a victory. It was a super fun game. Ray was an excellent opponent. And really, I think it was the smoke rules that saved my butt because his medium anti-tank guns could have probably just knocked out all of my tanks before I was able to really do anything with them. So after one game, I was sitting at nine points. My secondary objective was to blow up a tank with an infantry assault, and the suicide AT bomber kind of made that a, a very easy secondary objective to claim. So this is kind of how I expected my games to go, but as we'll find out in game two, things took a turn in a different direction. So after a super healthy and very fulfilling lunch at Taco Bell, we came back to Gejo Games and jumped into Game 2. So my opponent for Game 2 was Tim and his Americans. Now this isn't what I expected to face this tournament. Uh, I brought 14 order dice and a lot of crappy tanks because I figured my weighted numbers would offset uh, how poor my tanks actually perform. Uh, but with my 14 order dice, I faced off against Tim and his 10 order dice, meaning I didn't have that much of a dice superiority. And he had five tanks that were pretty much superior to most of my tanks, except maybe my Shinhodo Chiha. So Tim ran five uh, Locust light tanks. Uh, each one is a Armor 8 with a light anti-tank gun. But he ran three of them as veterans, which means he gets the gyro stabilized rule. He had a truck with a large infantry squad in it with anti-tank grenades. He had a Jeep with a machine gun. And then he had a jeep to tow around a light howitzer. So 10 order dice versus 14. Our scenario for game two was envelopment. And because the allies lost the first round, they were automatically the defenders. So this meant that this game should have been an easy win for me. Uh, but as you'll see, uh, bold action happens and things don't always turn out the way you expect. So the first thing that went wrong for me is rolling for my prep bombardment. I rolled another one. So for the second game in a row, I did not get a prep bombardment. So all of his units started on the board, but none of them started with any pins. This was pretty detrimental to me. Tim deployed very well. There was this road on top of a dike that went right down the middle of the board, and he blocked it off with two tanks and left his light howitzer back there as well. And then had his three gyro stabilized tanks on one flank and his infantry on the other. So things were going all right off the bat. My Hagos were advancing on the left flank just fine. Tim did manage to destroy both of my trucks, the one towing my medium AT gun and the one carrying the flamethrower team and a suicide AT guy. Uh, he managed to blow both those up with machine guns, which was some bad luck for me. Uh, but it was turn three, and I was about midway up the board when Tim pulled almost all of his dice before any of mine came out. So Tim managed to destroy a couple of my tanks and pin others. He immobilized one. Uh, really, it was the pins and the uh, crew stunned effects that, that really killed me, which meant my tanks couldn't move. So after turn three, he really just started to whittle my numbers down. His infantry squads uh, didn't manage to destroy any tanks, but it was such a big squad that he wrapped around both of my Hagos, uh, making sure that they couldn't move. The other one was immobilized anyways, but he blocked both of them. 
on the other flank, my Chihas were just racking up pins and not really being destroyed, but taking those pins. Uh, my Shinhodo Chiha actually was eventually pinned out by the end of the game. So I had a lot of bad luck this game, but Tim also played very well and he deployed in a really smart way. Uh, so definitely kudos to him. I did manage to get two Suicide AT guys off the board and my command Hago, which left me with 12 points to his 18. Uh, I did not manage to get my secondary objective, which was um, my command vehicle should end the game in my opponent's deployment zone. I didn't really read it well, so I just figured I would get him off at any cost. And so I got him off the board, but I needed him to be on the board. And I failed that secondary objective. So it was a decently close game. It was still a ton of fun. Uh, just some really funny moments laughing uh, with Tim and just making jokes about my horrible luck. But it was super fun. So then we went on to game three. And during game three, my list building strategy was proved wrong even further. So my opponent for game three was Doug. Uh, Doug was the organizer of the event, but one of our players had to drop out uh, after game two, so he filled in for him. So Doug brought his Soviet force. Uh, this was a really, really cool army to play against. Uh, so he had two T-34s, uh, same as Ray. They're T-34-85s, but he ran them as T-34-76s. He had three T-26 tanks. These were light tanks with... Uh, light AT gun. Actually, they might be armor seven um, with a light AT gun. He had a nice little squad of cavalry. Uh, they could use the horses as their transport. Uh, he had two Zis three tractors. Uh, these actually proved to be pretty effective. He had a giant heavy howitzer that was towed by a truck. Uh, and then he had another truck with a free inexperienced squad in it. So my list building theory came up against this list which was 12 dice versus my 14 so i had barely any advantage in dice only two so the mission for this scenario was key positions and we ended up with five objectives uh, the objectives were kind of placed in an x pattern so my thinking is that by this point in the day my brain was a little fried because i ended up making some really bad decisions in this game so doug is a is a pretty great player he positioned his units really really well uh, really utilized a lot of ambush orders and um, just putting his stuff in cover to where I couldn't get to it. Uh, I definitely tunnel visioned pretty hard in this this game. Uh, he brought his cavalry up the center and I brought on my two Chihas with light howitzers to try and deal with it. Um, I actually ended up bottling his cavalry, uh, his t-34s and his inexperienced squad right in the center between two buildings and uh, because tanks can't move through friendly units uh, i thought i had him pretty well pinned there but i couldn't finish any of those units off poor dice rolls but also just my regular chihas just bouncing rounds off the t-34s uh, they couldn't actually penetrate the armor nine so doug had a chance to shake off the pins that were coming from the light howitzer and he did so every time actually i think every time one of my my regular chihas hit something the pins from their guns were ignored so light howitzer is not very effective for tank wars uh, but i also had some bad luck in this game one of my suicide at guys deployed in some dense cover and with his Zis 3 anti tank gun. Doug actually managed to kill him with super sixes. Uh, so that was just total bad luck uh, or good luck for Doug. I also stupidly put one of my other suicide AT guys in a building. Doug brought on his heavy howitzer and brought the building down. So that was very short sighted on my part. Uh, I ran my truck up one flank. The truck ended up getting destroyed and the flamethrower team was forced out but it survived. Uh, the next turn, I ran him towards some T-26s that were very close and totally ignored the ambush order that Doug had placed on another T-26. And that flamethrower team was just wiped out before they had a chance to do anything. Uh, so by that point in the game, um, I was really fighting a losing battle uh, on 
my left flank, uh, he had the heavy howitzer and a T-26 in ambush. Uh, the heavy howitzer took out a Chi Ha and uh, actually managed to catch my third suicide AT guy in the blast, but he survived. But he was so pinned down by units in ambush that there was just nothing that he could do the entire game. Um, I tried getting my command vehicle into his deployment zone, but again, he just had set up such a good interlocking fields of fire with his ambush orders that there was nowhere for me to go. So this ended up being uh, very much a victory for Doug and my second loss of the day. So there was some bad luck, um, but I definitely made some really poor strategic decisions and Doug is an excellent player and knew what he was doing. And so I learned a ton from this game. I don't know if I just need more caffeine or what it is by game three, uh, just to keep my brain semi working. But um, Doug was a super fun opponent and it was still fun even though I was getting blown off the table. Uh, I have decided that running Japanese armor platoons is probably not the way to go. Uh, even when it's kind of an early to mid war uh, date range for the event. So after the first and second games, the Axis team was ahead. Uh, by the end of the third game, the Allies had just managed to squeak by, I think, by only three or four points. It was very, very close, uh, which made for a very exciting day. Uh, the winning list ended up being uh, Gavin Beaton's finish list. Uh, he actually had the most points at the end of the day, but unfortunately was on the losing side. And then uh, Drake's British Valentines and Sherman's um, were the best scoring list for the Allies. So this was a super fun event. I really like the Tank Wars format. Uh, it allowed for some fast games. Uh, you know, we're playing three games in one day, so it was nice that uh, our games were over in about two hours. But it was super great having everyone together again, uh, rolling dice after a, a long year of not playing any games due to COVID. Um, we had a ton of prize support. Uh, Doug printed out some models himself. We had support from Trenchworks and Warlord Games and especially Gajo Games. So thank you to Craig and Chris and everyone at Gajo Games for allowing us to put this event on. And I ended up walking away from the event with a little 3D printed Panzer II. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I might paint it up for uh, my Romanians as kind of German support. Anyways, this was a fantastic event. A great way to get back into bold action and rolling dice with friends. And I can't wait for the next one. So, congratulations on making it all the way to the end of the video. I'm sure none of you just skipped to the end to see how the giveaway works. So, here we are. Uh, I'm giving away a nine-man infantry squad of Japanese infantry from Eureka Miniatures. Uh, just a way to say thanks to my subscribers and uh, the people that follow me on Instagram. Uh, so to enter, it's very simple. All you got to do is like this video, comment something you would like to see done on this channel, and subscribe. That's it. And then I will pull a winner randomly uh, from that list, and the results will be on my next video. So good luck, and again, thanks for tuning in.